Welcome to today's discussion, where we'll be diving deep into the underlying value of AMC stock, exploring why its current price is not reflective of its true potential. We'll also analyze some of the critical aspects of the AMC stock saga, including why its short interest is increasing and what the implications are for retail investors. By examining the financials, market sentiment, and recent developments, We'll try to decode why AMC, despite being at its most profitable levels in the last five years, still finds itself at a valuation that's almost unprecedentedly low. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Let's begin by acknowledging that AMC is operating at its peak profitability in the last half decade, yet its valuation has plummeted. This discrepancy raises numerous questions about how the market is pricing AMC shares and what factors are contributing to its decline. The fact that it's trading at a level much lower than its intrinsic value indicates that external factors might be influencing its stock price more than the company's actual performance. As of the latest market close, AMC was priced at $0.498, cents, a significant drop, even considering its recent high of around $0.550 cents just a few months ago. Now, you might be wondering why, in a market where the overall box office has grown by 76%, AMC's stock is still struggling to gain momentum. In contrast, competitors like Cinemark CNK have witnessed a 69% gain in their stock value. This divergence is puzzling given that AMC controls a more substantial market share and has made strides in reducing its debt while diversifying its revenue streams. If we delve deeper into this scenario, we notice that AMC has not only paid down a significant portion of its debt, but it has also expanded its product lines. The company introduced new revenue streams, such as selling its signature popcorn in retail stores and launching vertically integrated candy products. These moves were strategically aimed at boosting its overall financial health. So why isn't AMC's stock price reflecting this progress? Market makers seem to play a crucial role here. As highlighted in a notable video clip featuring Ken Griffin, Market makers often have the power to set stock prices based on what they believe the stock should be worth. This could explain why AMC's stock has been somewhat frozen despite the broader industry's recovery. If market makers are indeed manipulating prices, then there's a substantial amount of unrealized value in AMC's current stock price. Now let's turn our attention to a recent analysis by B. Riley's Eric Wold, one of the few Wall Street analysts covering AMC. Wold has put forth a price target of $45 per share, which suggests that AMC's stock could see a more than 200% upside if it returns to pre-pandemic levels of profitability. This estimate is based on the assumption that AMC will continue to benefit from the box office recovery and further optimize its operations through various partnerships and new revenue channels. Think about this for a moment. With the current stock price hovering around $4.38, Achieving the $45 target would result in an over tenfold increase. Yet, AMC's stock has only been sliding downwards. What could be the reason behind this stark contrast between projected potential and present performance? A critical element in understanding AMC's current predicament is the role of short sellers. Over the past few years, short sellers have taken large positions against AMC, betting that its stock would fall. While this strategy might have seemed rational during the height of the pandemic when movie theaters were closed, it appears irrational in the present scenario given AMC's financial recovery and strategic growth initiatives. Despite AMC's recovery and expansion efforts, the short volume has been on the rise. Shares on loan are at unprecedented levels, indicating that short sellers are doubling down. This might seem counterintuitive, as shorting a company that's demonstrating resilience and growth prospects is risky. But short sellers are aware that increasing short positions can suppress a stock's price, even if only temporarily, which explains why AMC stock has not been able to gain traction. One of the primary tactics used by short sellers to keep AMC's stock price down is through the creation of synthetic shares. These are shares that are essentially manufactured to increase the supply of a stock without actual ownership. 
when these synthetic shares flood the market, they can artificially depress the stock price, making it look like there's a surplus of shares available for trading. Recent data reveals that there are over 2 million shares available to borrow, a sharp increase from just 90,000 shares a few weeks ago. Such a sudden spike suggests the involvement of synthetic shares, as these numbers don't align with the actual supply and demand dynamics for AMC stock. If synthetic shares are indeed being used, then the true value of AMC is being heavily suppressed. In the last year, AMC has entered into partnerships with major companies like Amazon and DoorDash. It has also begun distributing its own films and introduced new offerings, such as branded merchandise and premium experiences at its theaters. These initiatives have not only diversified its revenue streams, but have also solidified its position as a market leader in the movie theater industry. Despite these advancements, we see no corresponding rise in the stock price. According to Eric Wold's analysis, if AMC continues on its current trajectory, it should be well positioned to exceed pre-pandemic profitability levels. So why isn't the stock moving upwards? Another layer to consider is the sentiment among retail investors, who have been some of the most vocal proponents of AMC's potential. The AMC floor price, a term coined by retail investors to represent the minimum price at which they'd be willing to sell, has recently been updated to $2,086. While this number is not based on any fundamental analysis or valuation metric, it's indicative of the strong belief retail investors have in AMC's future potential. Retail investors continue to accumulate AMC shares, suggesting that they see long-term value despite the current price suppression. Their sentiment is supported by some institutional investors who are starting to take long positions in AMC, signaling a potential shift in market dynamics. One of the most harmful strategies affecting AMC's stock price is spoofing. This practice involves placing large buy or sell orders with no intention of executing them, merely to create the illusion of supply or demand imbalance. In AMC's case, this has been used to manipulate the stock price downward. A recent due diligence report by Crystal Ball highlighted several instances of spoofing, with large sell orders being placed and then quickly withdrawn pushing the stock price down. This tactic has been a recurring theme in AMC's trading history, further complicating its valuation and market behavior. In conclusion, despite the numerous positive developments for AMC, such as increased profitability, new partnerships, and a recovering box office, the stock remains undervalued. The role of short sellers, synthetic shares, and market manipulation tactics like spoofing have created a challenging environment for AMC to achieve its true market value. However, the sentiment among retail investors remains strong. Analysts like Eric Wold see a clear path for AMC to reach $45 per share if it continues on its current trajectory. Whether or not AMC achieves this target will depend on the broader market dynamics, including how effectively it can combat the influence of short sellers and market makers. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.